Hey guys, welcome back to another video and in this video we will learn thread locals. So if you remember this discussion, this diagram from one of the earlier videos which was on the thread safety, you remember how we talked about if something is shared and mutable, it can cause uh, thread safety risks. And we talked about how to prevent this. There are a couple of ways like do not share if you can. If you have to share, then try to make it in such a way that you do not mutate the state. And if you have to share and mutate the state, then try to coordinate the access so that things remain consistent. So in this diagram, we talked about how if there are two things, two objects on the heap, let's say object number one and object number two, and if they are not shared, that means each thread has its own copy, then that thing is automatically thread safe. And in this video, we will continue with the same thought that do not share the state. Now, it's not always possible. We have to share the state many times and those are different scenarios which we will cover in future videos. But there are certain scenarios where you can refactor the code or correct the current implementation by not sharing the state. So suppose there is a class A and in this class there is a method M. In this method M, there are a local variable int A equals to 0. Then there is also an instance variable private int p equals to let's say minus 1. Then there are two threads t1 and t2. So this is thread t1, this is thread t2. And suppose there is a single object of class A, a a1 equals to new a. So we know what will happen on the heap a1 will be created and stored and t1 and t2 will access the same object and because b is the instance variable that means if any thread changes the value of b which is this one the change will be reflected in the other thread as well so that means if with the help of with the reference of this a1 if t1 changes b1 value to let's say 0 t2 will be able to see this value 0 because a they are working on the same object and b is the instance variable or the state of that object okay but notice what would happen when a thread calls method m this one and we know how method calls work we know threads have stack memory so there are stack frames whenever you call a method a new stack frame gets added and when the method completes the execution that is popped from the thread stack so all the local variables are stored on the stack memory and that stack belongs to the thread so for example, this is the stack memory of thread T1 and this is the stack memory of thread T2. So when T1 calls M, it initializes a local variable A equals to 0 and that value goes here, that variable goes here in the local memory of thread T1, which is the stack. And similarly, when T2 calls method M on the same object, it doesn't matter, the local variable A, the local copy goes here as well. And this is a very important point. What that means is each thread has its own local stack, local stack memory. And if anything is stored on this stack, okay, then this is guaranteed to be thread safe because there are guarantees provided by JVM that a thread cannot access another thread stack. Okay, so it cannot access any content which is stored on the stack of thread T1. So threads cannot see each other stack. And if something is stored on the stack, then it is implicitly thread safe because it's not shared. So local variables are always thread safe. So whenever you face a thread safety problem, always check if you can refactor the logic to use local variables. Because many times people simply add instance variables which can cause thread safety problems because they represent the state of that object. Okay, so it might be possible to refactor the logic to add local variables which will be thread safe because they will not be shared across threads. But many times we cannot convert or refactor the existing logic to use local variables. It's not always possible. So what happens when we need a value which is specific to a thread? So what is thread local? Thread local is a class in java.lang package and this class provides thread local variables. That means values or variables which are local to a particular thread. In the same way as we define let's say an integer variable int a or float variable float b or any object of a class let's say hash map m in the same way we create or define thread local variables because thread local is a class so we can simply create a new object of a thread local variable now how is this variable different from other variables or objects that we create so when we create a thread local object or a thread local variable 
what happens when a thread accesses a thread local variable then that thread gets a separate copy okay its own copy of that variable which is independently and separately initialized now what do we mean by that each thread gets its own value let's understand this point so we will take an example of user session because this is very close to the concept of thread local we know how sessions work and why we use sessions suppose there are multiple users and in the application there is a common piece of logic maybe a library or something that manages the user sessions so what happens when a user u1 logs in with the help of that library or framework it will have its own instance of session and similarly when another user user2 logs in it will have its own instance of session so while there are two sessions for two users these two sessions are separate they are not shared and in the same way when we have a thread local variable and multiple threads are trying to get a value out of that thread local variable then each thread will have its own value so here we have two threads t2 and t1 and each thread has its own stack here it is they have their own stack now in the same way let's say there is a common entity which is managing the session now what we want is let's say when thread t1 gets a value out of this session it gets a session value okay which is specific to this thread t1 and similarly when thread t2 asks for a session it should get its own value so if this value is v1 and this value is v2 we want these to be different and not shared okay so when you have a similar scenario where we want a value which is local to a thread or a per thread value then we use thread local so how can we implement this particular scenario using thread local so for example we will create a thread local variable let's say thread local a all right now when thread t1 comes which is this thread this will call let's say a dot get all right now when a thread calls a dot get what thread local will do it will create a value because it has to return a value but that value will be specific to thread t1 and that value will be stored on the stack of thread t1 let's say v1 here it goes and similarly when thread t2 comes it will also call a dot get it will get a return value and that value will be stored on the stack of thread t2 and we know if a value is stored on the stack of a particular thread then that value is not shared okay that value or that variable is automatically thread safe so in this case even though this thread local is shared but because of the implementation each thread has its own value which is stored on the stack memory of that particular thread and since a thread cannot access the contents of a stack of another thread okay so that thing is automatically thread safe and that is the concept of thread local when you access a thread local when you define something to be thread local each value will be specific to a particular thread that means local to that thread so in this example v1 represents this session which is local to thread 1 and v2 is another session which is local to thread 2 even though this thread local is shared let's now understand how this is implemented how this works internally so what happens each thread has a thread local map okay and map we know is a key value pair so this is a thread local map all right and similarly this is also a thread local map so each thread has a thread local map internally now when we define a thread local variable okay and when a thread uses a thread local variable and gets a value back what happens it will store that thread local in its own thread local map so here in this example we have two thread local variables this is variable one okay v1 let's say and this is another variable v2 thread local a and thread local b and we know because this is an object thread local is a class so a represents the object and similarly b also represents the object so what happens when thread t1 accesses thread local a or if any thread accesses a thread local variable how this is stored is there will be an entry added to the internal thread local map of that particular thread where the key will be the object which represents basically the object so that's why i am just writing a because this is actually an object and the value will be the corresponding value so for example when thread t1 called a dot get 
it returned a1 so that value will be stored as the value and the key will be the object itself which is a and similarly in the thread local map of thread 2 the key will be the object which is same a but the value will be a2 because maybe when thread t2 called a dot get it returned the value a2 and here for another thread local variable which is b there will be another entry in the same thread local map where the key will be the object b and the value b1 and similarly here the key will be object b and the value b2 so each thread has a thread local map which stores the entries and these entries have key value pairs where the key is the object of thread local itself and the value is the corresponding value so after setting the thread local value whenever the thread let's say wants the value back it will call a dot get and that value will be returned from the internal thread local map and that's how this is made thread safe now that we have covered the basics let's see a quick example a quick demo of thread local so here we have a very simple class thread local demo with a main method and uh, we will try to implement the same user session with the help of thread local variable thread local variables are generally declared as private static and final variables because they are meant to be shared across multiple threads so let's start by declaring a thread local variable private static final thread local okay and let's name it session then we call thread local dot with initial and if you notice this accepts a supplier so what we are doing here is and this must be static so what we are doing here is we are declaring a thread local variable with name session and with initial method can be used let's say if you have to initialize a thread local variable with the initial value but in this case because we are managing the session so it doesn't make any sense to have a default value of that session all right that's why we are simply passing the null with the help of the supplier all right it also accepts a type parameter that defines the value that this thread local will store so for example we just want to store the username that can be a string and here you can have any custom type as well for example let's say currency or maybe some other object a user object for example anything that you want to store or have to be thread local so now that we have a thread local variable how do we use it so first of all we will create a couple of threads which will represent different sessions and that's how we will show how can we have different values for different threads so here we have thread t1 equals to thread dot of platform name let's give it a name thread t1 and then we can start the thread all right so here we have thread t1 then we will have another thread which is t2 and here it is thread t2 and then for the demo we will simply try to wait for thread t1 and t2 so we'll call join just to hold the execution of this program and in the end we can put a log message main exiting all right so suppose there are two threads which represent two users and what we want to do is when thread t1 starts we want to access the thread local to set username in its own session all right and after some time we again want to access the thread local to get the value and similarly we want to do the same thing in thread t2 now how do we access the thread local to set a value that is very simple you just have to get the reference or the object of that thread local and we know because this is private static and final so we can access it here like this session dot and then you can see there are different methods get to get the value to set the value to remove the value from the thread local we can use the set value so for example this user is t1 user1 and similarly to set the value in thread2 we can use session 
dot set t2 user2 all right and when we want to get the value all right in the same thread from the thread local we will again access the value using the object which is session dot get you see and because we have defined the data type to be string so we are getting a string value back like this thread dot current thread dot get name gets the user and this user is session dot get like this and similarly we can access the value from the thread local in thread 2 now to showcase the thread interleaving what i can do let's say we can have a sleep call here of let's say two seconds and we can ignore handling the exception for now for this demo all right although you should handle the interrupt in a sensible way but in this example we can ignore this bit so what i intend to show is for example when thread t1 starts it will access the thread local variable it will set its own value so the expectation is that it will have its own value of session which will store the name t1 user1 all right but before it can complete the execution before it can print the value from the thread local somehow it is going to the sleep state which represents a context switch or some other delay which could happen between these two lines okay so it goes to the sleep state for two seconds and when it comes back to the sleep it will try to print the value that it has set here all right in the meantime thread t2 will start it will set its own value t2 user 2 and without any delay all right it will simply print the value which it has set here and it will complete its execution so what we want to show and what we want to check is what happens when there is a delay between these two lines will we see the correct value which has been set here or there is a chance of interleaving which can basically make the value inconsistent for thread t1 all right so again we have a thread local variable we are starting two threads and in each thread we are accessing the thread local variable to set the value and to get the value then we are waiting for these two threads and in the end main is exiting so let's try to run the program and notice the behavior and as you can see t2 completes first so we see the log message t2 gets the user t2 user 2 and then after the sleep t1 completes the execution t1 gets the user t1 user 1 and then main exiting and if we rerun the program we always see the correct value what we can do uh, let's play with the delays let's add some more delay here in thread 2 as well okay let's make it 2 and we can change it to 1 any permutation and combination that you can try and for t1 we see the value t1 user 1 for t2 we see the value t2 user 2 and this is happening because we are using thread local for thread local each thread is having its own space all right in which it is setting the value and getting the value and that's why any changes in thread t2 is not impacting thread t1 and vice versa that is the power of thread local variables so whenever you need something to be local to a thread or you see a pattern where we need something per thread okay think about if you can use thread local variables now as a best practice when you are done when you don't need the thread local value anymore feel free to remove the value all right like this and similarly you can do here in the thread 2 what it will do it will simply remove the value which was specific to this thread so if you are removing the value here from the thread local it will not impact the value of t1 or any other thread that will simply remove its own value all right so that is the thread local that we saw in this demo so that's all for now that's it for this video and in the next video i will come back with a new topic on java concurrency see you in the next video thanks for watching